Well, welcome to class, everybody. Our last class together. Um, I'll just say out of the gate, I, I forgot my computer charger at home. So I'm running low on my computer battery. But I'm hoping that I've got enough that it's not going to go out on us. But um, at any rate, I've got my phone. So I'm going to try and get the demo done as quickly as possible um, without going too fast. But I just, yeah. If, if my computer goes out, don't panic. I think I'll still be here on, on my phone. So we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I saw some people posting in the Facebook group and um, really exciting to see what people have been making. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to hold their, um, their weaving up and just kind of show what you've been working on before we get started. Oh gosh, nice Laura. I love all those textures. Oh, beautiful. I love that little yellowy orange square in there. Oh, so nice. Yeah, awesome. Oh, cool. Oh, love that fringe, Melissa. That looks great. So fun to see what everyone came up with. Very cool. And Beth, oh, look at all those shapes. Ooh, I like that. Awesome. Cool. Well, we'll um, probably have a little time at the end to um, show off a little more and um, we'll see how long it takes to do the, um, the, the taking off the loom and finishing up. But before I dive into that, um, does anybody have questions about anything from last class or any issues you ran into weaving that you want to bring up? Great. Well, then I'll go ahead and spotlight my screen here. So hopefully my, my loom here with my hand is big on your screen. If it's not for you, you can um, pin it for yourself, but I think I spotlighted it for everybody. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna demonstrate what you do when you're finished weaving. Um, so, it looks like a lot of the the tapestries I've seen from you all, um, you've gone most of the length of your loom, which is great, but um, you don't have to go that far uh, to be finished. You know, you can um, weave up as much as you want and call it done and it'll just be a little bit shorter. So with mine, I've not gone the full length of the loom, but um, for the purposes of demonstrating, I'm gonna call it done and uh, and show the process. But just wanted to clarify that, that you don't technically have to go all the way um, if you don't want to. Um, and yeah, some of you probably noticed too, weaving all the way um, you know, towards the, the, the other end, it starts to get a little difficult um, as your work becomes a little harder to sort of maneuver in and out of. It can get a little trickier. Um, but basically before you start the process, I just like to make sure that I have a nice stable end row. Um, and so just, you don't wanna end with, with fringe knots. Um, you just wanna end with a nice plain weave. Um, you could end with roving. Um, I guess like the thing you want to be uh, conscientious of when you're taking off of the loom and finishing is just like how sturdy or stable your tapestry is. And I've mentioned this before, but because we're doing, we're, you know, we're making more decorative pieces rather than utilitarian, um, there's a little more leeway um, as far as the uh, sturdiness goes. Um, so if it's like, if it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be as sturdy as a fabric you are weaving to, you know, use as a blanket or wear as a shirt. So we have a little more leeway. Um, so yeah, but basically you just don't really wanna end with fringe. That can be a little tricky. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, if I'm really nervous about the potential for it coming undone, like I might end with like a finer, um thread like maybe just doing one strand versus the two but I don't I don't see foresee any problem um 
taking off with the ending that I have with the, with the two threads that I used. Um, so yeah. So once you feel like you've got a stable um, bottom couple rows, then you'll turn over to the back and sort of the, um, the exhilarating part, the scary part maybe is cutting off. So I'm just gonna cut these back warp threads just straight in the middle. And they kind of fling once that tension is released. Um, and then these that are taped down, I just kind of pull out. And then um, you take the tape off. Sometimes it rips the cardboard a little bit. So you can decide if you want to mess around with taking it off or if you just want to kind of leave the tape there. It doesn't really matter. But so once you get to this point um, that you've cut, you don't really want to lift your weaving up off of the surface anymore. So I like to kind of get my warp threads on either end um, sort of out of the way and a little bit organized. Uh, I'm doing the same at this other end that's off camera that you can't see, but just getting them a little bit organized. And I don't want to lift the weaving off because at this point it's, it's unstable because it's all untied and it's off of the loom. So here's my weaving from the back side. We see like all of the various ends that I have. Um, and so, and there's a little fringe poking up. I'm just gonna get it out of the way so that I just can kind of focus on my warp ends here. So we need to secure our weft, the horizontal rows, because at this point they could just easily just come undone. Um, so to do that, um, I, uh, tie square knots. So I tie each pair of warp threads into a square knot up to the top and bottom row. So I'll just start on this end with these first two warp threads. Um, and for a square knot, I'm going to cross my threads, make an X, and then bring the bottom one up and through that hole and tighten up. And then again, I'm going to make my X and then bring the bottom one up and through the loop and around and double knot it. And so when I'm going up to the bottom row, um, I do want to tie a tight knot, but I don't want to go so tight um, that my warp threads start to come together and compress and bunch up. So you want to be careful not to, you know, use, you know, all of the muscles in your body to tighten it. Um, you don't need to go too hard with it, but you do just want to have it nice and snug up against that bottom or top row, whichever one you're working on. And then you just can go, you, oh, yeah. Can you go over the knot one more time? Sure. So I just did my second pair. So here's my third pair. So I separate the threads from one another, and then I take one and cross it over the other. And then whichever thread is on the bottom of that X, I bring it up and put it in to the loop and then wrap it around. Kind of like you're tying your shoes there. So there's one. And then again, I cross and make that X. Then the bottom one, I come up and the tail goes into the center and then I wrap it around and tighten the two tails up. Make that knot. And I'll show it slow one more time. And um, I should say, you know, there's, there's different ways, there's different knots you can make or different ways to make knots. So you could also do um, a version where you hold the two ends together and sort of together make a circle and then take both ends into that circle and tighten up. Um, so if, if that style of knots feels more intuitive to you, um, you know, that's okay too. You just want to have some kind of knot that's going to be Staple. So I have an odd number. 
Okay, that's okay. So if that happens, then like whatever is the odd one at the end, I just like double knot it to whatever one is next to it. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know how that happened. Oh yeah, sometimes that happens. I might, you know, I might even have an odd one. It just if you like, I don't know if these looms, like just the way you warp them, you might just always end up with an odd one. I can't remember, um, but yeah, that definitely happens sometimes. um thank you yeah and I'll show the, the the two knots one more time slowly here so um for the first one I showed that square knot um, I take the two uh warp threads and I make an x and whichever thread is on bottom I bring it up and set that end into the loop and then loop it around and tighten and then again make my x bring that tail up into the loop and then tuck it underneath the side of the circle there and tighten up and then for that other one and yeah it looks like i've got an odd number too so it might just be like the spacing um you know of the warp maybe it's just an odd spacing so we might all have odd number um but so and then the other knot i showed you can hold both threads at the same time and loop the tails over top of the two threads making an x and then wrap it under and up through the little loop and then sort of using your fingers to help guide the knot towards that top or bottom row to tighten up there yeah, and so here I've got my odd one. And so I'll just do a square knot next to one of the warp threads, or, or with one of the warp threads, it's next to it. So um, you won't really see the knots once it's finished, so it's okay that it's like a little wonky. Um, but in the future, if that is something that you want to avoid, you can count your warp threads and just make sure that you're, you know, got an even number. Um, and so I've got my one end finished, so I'm just gonna tip it around here and do the same thing on the other end. So does anyone else have questions about this part of the process? Any questions coming up or hiccups you're running into? And, um, you know, one thing I've said several times um, throughout these classes is that, you know, there's always more than one way to do a certain thing. And so same thing with taking a tapestry off a loom, finishing it. Um, if, you know, there's different ways to warp your loom. Um, I think maybe I mentioned this in the first class when we were warping our looms, but you could, instead of going um, all the way around both sides, you could, um, you know, warp it in a way where you're sort of wrapping around. You know, you go kind of wrap around like this so that you're not um, having the same warp threads on the back. Um, so that's a different way that you could warp it. Um, I like to teach intro classes with warping the other way because then you have these longer tails to work with um, and that can be a little bit easier for folks. But um, but yeah, there is that other way of warping. And so the it, in the process for taking it off and finishing would be slightly different. In some ways I prefer it, um, but in other ways this feels like a little more accessible uh, way to do it. So yeah, always, always more than one way. Okay, yeah, so I've got an odd number on this end too. So yeah, I think it's just there's the spaces on the loom, there's an odd number of spaces. So that's our, that's our answer, at least on my loom. It sounds like maybe on others. Okay. So I'm 
finish my last pair of warp threads and I'll um, wait a little bit um, before I show the next phase. Um, I know some people are tying knots. I'll wait about another minute or two. And um, if you're not finished tying your knots, that's okay. Um, okay, well, let me go ahead and show the next step for those that are finished. And also I'm, I'm racing against my, uh, my computer battery here. So, um, okay, so the next phase, um, the next step that I like to do is then to deal with all of these ends. So as we are weaving, as we were changing colors, switching out threads, we um, have all of these ends to deal with. And, you know, I, I harped on in that, in that first class that it's, uh, and in the second class too, that you want to have your ends sort of in the middle. So we sort of see that now, like if we look where all of our ends are coming out, um, they're all coming out, uh, you know, if, if that's what you did, if that's how you wove yours, they're all coming out sort of in the middle. Um, and so, except for maybe the first one. So my first one, we didn't start in the middle. Um, it's out on the edge here and which is fine, which is no big deal, but, and actually, oh no, that's fringe. So I just like ha having the ends in the middle because we're gonna weave the ends in now as an option. Um, and for this phase of finishing up, it just makes it um, less hectic taking the weaving off of the loom because for ends that are on the edges, you know, they can, if you're maneuvering your tapestry around, they could easily sort of slip out and come unwoven. And that's just not that it would, um, you know, totally unravel what you've done, but it just sort of creates unnecessary problems. So um, if the idea of weaving in all of your ends feels very daunting, um, you don't necessarily have to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it, but I'll, I'll also show you what you can do to not do it, or at least not as much. Um, but so, let's see, I'm going to grab some books so I can raise up my tapestry. So I think be easier to see this close up. So So basically what you're going to do with these ends is you're going to, um, using your needle, sort of um, take them vertically um, in between your weft, your wefted rows, your weft rows, so that they're following the lines of your warp threads. And that way they are sort of secure in the tapestry itself and won't come undone. So um, sometimes, especially if, you know, these are pretty long, I left my tails pretty long. Um, so I have quite a bit to work with, but if you cut your tails a little short, um, I like to put the needle in first. So see here, um, I'm putting the needle through this blue and then these two green rows of weft. So I would say at least three rows um, and you can go either direction. So I could go up into the gray here, but that's getting close to the top of my tapestry. So I'm going to go this way, but I'm just going to pick up a couple rows and I'm not piercing through to the front. So if you turn this over, you don't see my needle. So my needle's not coming through. So it's going in between just like the warp thread is. 
So you put your needle in and you can get in place and it, you can thread your needle before. Um, sometimes, again, if, you're, if your tail is kind of short, it's easier to put the needle in first. But then you thread your end through the needle and then pull it through those warp threads. And then it'll be nice and secure and you can double check on the front before you take it out or before you cut it, I'm sorry. Um, so you can kind of see if you look closely, you can kind of see how that warp or that the tail, you can see how the thread sort of starts to go down, but it, you don't act, you know, unless you're looking very, very closely, you don't really see that that is happening. But the blue tail isn't poking through any of those rows um, that I hid it in. So then once it's behind all of those rows and secure, sorry, I'm like trying to get my fingers out of the way here, then you can snip it. Um, and then you would just do that all the way through. So I'll show again here. So let's tackle this gray one here. So I'm gonna go next to the gray over here. Put my needle through these rows and then go ahead and thread that yarn through. And then I'm gonna pull down. And then that tail comes along. And now it's secured in place and I can snip it. And then, you know, you would do the same thing for some of these, you know, if you used any like funky yarns, like I have this thicker red here, so I'll, I'll do it for this red too. It can, um, you might have to play around like, I don't know, just like make sure it's not too bulky on the right side of the of the tapestry, but just the same thing. I'm gonna take my needle through a couple rows here and then would you do the same thing if your if your end yarns are on the outside? Yeah, you would, and you try and like, yeah, you would, yep. And you can do it like I'll show you on mine where I have my one end row. So okay. yeah, so this thick one, I'm just gonna bring it through just the same and trim it. And if we look to the other side, you know, we don't see where that happened. Sorry, I keep sliding off camera a little bit on some of this. Um, but yeah, so great question. So if you do have some end ones, which I think most of us will have on where we started since I didn't start us in the middle on that first row. So here's one of my end ones. I'm gonna turn it this way. Um, so here's one of my tails, my, my very first one that's on the end here. So for this one, um, I'm gonna take it like through the, end loops here. Um, so just right along the edge. Again, I'm just following that, that warp thread, that red warp thread. And I'm sort of a smaller needle tonight, so it's a little tricky to put the yarn through. But yeah, just pull down. And then snip. And so, yeah, again, like another reason why I don't love on the end, um, you know, having tails on the end, because if that was like a one of the bulkier yarns like this, like it could potentially bulk out the row a little bit in a more obvious way being on the edge. I mean, that one was totally fine and, you know, it wouldn't be anything dire, but um, I don't know. It just, I feel like it makes life easier to just have your ends in the middle as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, so I'm not going to demonstrate doing this to all of my ends. Um, but if you, if you're looking at yours and you're like, gosh, I don't like, I just want to put this on the wall. Like I don't, no one's going to see the back. Like I don't really care that much. Um, you could just sort of 
snip them shorter. I wouldn't snip them so short because again, like they could, you know, if you snip them so short, like up to the, the face of the tapestry, you know, it could very easily come unwoven. So I would still leave a little, um, but and trim it a little bit so that it doesn't hang down to show on the right side, if that makes sense. So like some of these that are long, you could just trim down. Um, and I'll just do that for now, just for the sake of making it easier to see what's going on here. But if there's like some that are towards the bottom, like these, um, these that are here, this is the bottom of my tapestry. So like this blue and this black that are hanging down, I couldn't safely cut them short enough to where they wouldn't be showing. So then I'm gonna hide those ends. And then up in the weaving here. So once you get into a good groove with it, it doesn't take as long as you might think when you first look at it, but can can be a little time consuming depending on how many ends you have. And so for this um for this end where I use two pieces of yarn as one, I'm gonna feed both ends at the same time through um, the needle. So still just treating them as one. You don't you, you wouldn't have to do it that way. You could separate them out and leave each end in separately, but just treating them as one right there. So, um, so does anybody have any questions, any lingering questions about hiding your ends? Any questions about that before I move on to the next step? Let's back down some. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, I've got this big purple here. So, okay, so here's an example. So, I have this big purple here that I just left and I didn't weave in. Um, and it's sort of just hanging around out here and I don't really, it feels like if I were to, you know, I can't just cut it because it's sort of coming, it's not really fully wrapped around the warp thread. Um, so on this one, what I'm going to do, I'll thread it up, thread it through the needle. And then as I tuck it in, it, it sort of wraps itself around the warp thread to sort to secure it into place a little bit better. Um, so that would be one, you know, if, you, if they're on the ends, if your tails are on the ends, I wouldn't suggest just trimming them short and leaving them like I did for the majority of mine. You definitely want to tuck any tails that you left on the edges of your tapestry. So for example, like that one that I just took care of. Um, okay, so now your tapestry is secure, so you can handle it a little more freely without worrying about it, you know, totally coming undone. Um, but at this point, you basically have some more aesthetic choices to make. So, um, let me take all this off. So for instance, this is my, uh, what I have with mine. I have like a wonk, a weird little, let me take this knot out because it's like going in the wrong direction. <laughs> that was like a little dumb thing I did. But so here's my tapestry. This is the bottom, this is the top. So one thing I have to decide, you know, someone asked about fringe. So um, so one thing I, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this and I um, apologize if I didn't, but Another way you could have fringe at the bottom is if you left your warp thread long um, and fringe-like. So I could leave my tapestry, you know, these, these bottom warp threads long um, 
and that could act as fringe. I kind of like it. Like I like how, for me, I like how short the body is. And then I like these kind of long legs. I really like the color of the warp thread. So for this one, I might choose to actually keep them long. But if, if you don't want those bottom warp threads showing, then you'll do, you'll hide them just like you did all of, you know, your other edges. So, um, so the same, using the exact same method, um, I, I would probably do both at a time, both that are in the pair. But again, you, you could separate them out if you wanted. And you would go, same thing, you would just go up into a few rows of weft thread and then hide them and you can kind of even pull so that um, you might have to do some maneuvering to try and hide the knot that you tied. Um, so pulling it tight enough so that it hides in there. So there, now my, pull tight enough on that, that the knot is sort of hidden in there. You still see the little peak of of warp thread, but you see that in other parts um, of the weaving also. But I'm going to take that out just because that's not what I want to do for my weaving. But yeah, if, if you want to hide the bottom ones, um, then that's what you would do. You would go all the way down the line and hide them using that same method. Um, I'm trying to take mine out here. I'm undoing the little knot that I tied. Okay. So I made my decision. I'm going to keep those long, but then I still have the top to deal with. So, um, so I don't want the ones at the top showing. So I am going to hide all those. Um, but before I do, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a, a dowel rod up through the top. So I know I want a dowel rod on mine. So that's one thing you can do. I think you all got a pencil, but you could use a dowel rod also. I'm not sure if you all got dowel rods or not, or just the pencil. Um, but I have this dowel rod here that I'm going to thread through. Again, you could, you could use a pencil or even a stick from outside if you wanted like an organic, like natural kind of look. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I would use this dowel rod. So basically for each knot that you tie, let me stand up so I make sure I'm good in the camera. So for each knot that you tied, you're going to pull up a little bit so that you create a little space in that loop there. Um, underneath of the knot is where you'll stick your dowel rod. And so you'll just go down the line, pull up a little bit, there's enough space to stick your dowel rod through or stick or whatever you're using. And as I'm doing this, it sort of looks like it's sort of catching this gray string. So I think I'm gonna have to go back and, sorry, I'm like totally out of the camera. I'm gonna have to go back and sort of maneuver that. Um, I'm just gonna keep going down the line. I'm threading my dowel rod through. And we have sort of the, the wonky one. <laughs> that had three tied to it. So there's sort of two little arcs to go under there. Um, and then you kind of straighten it out. And let's see. So let me check. It's like, huh. So what happened was that, that gray um, string that, that was my first row that I hid um, down here, it came out of there because it got caught on the dowel rod. So I'm actually going to um, take it out a little bit. I'm just going to take my needle and take it out a little bit. 
and then um, so now it's like a, a an end that's now in the middle <laughs> rather than on the edge and then I'm gonna just the same thing hide it um, just kind of being a little bit pesky there so no big deal um, and so yeah so that's what it would look like on the dowel rod and so you see the the warp thread sort of coming up over the dowel rod and then again I'll, I'll take all of these warp threads and hide them and tuck them into the back so that it sort of even pulls the knots down and so you don't even really see the knots you just see sort of a nice crisp um, finish there with the dowel rod. And that's basically it. And then you can decide, like, you know, now that you see it off of the loom, you can, you know, go back and look at different elements, like of your fringe, and you say, you know, like, oh, do I want to trim my fringe? And if I do, do I want to do like straight across? Do I want them at a diagonal? Do I like them a little messy? But, you know, it's just kind of like cutting hair. You can go and trim them up. Same with your warp threads. Um, that if you're using those as fringe, you know, you can kind of trim those in, if you want, or if you want to leave them a little more um, kind of fun and funky and different lengths. Um, I think I sort of preferred it with different lengths, but um, I could always go back and um, trim up there. But yeah, you can sort of make those last little finishing adjustments. Um, and again, if you like are at a point where you're like, I hate hiding the ends, like this is tedious and I don't want to do it. Um, even at the top here, like I could sort of trim the top and just let those hang behind and you wouldn't, I'm like holding it up, but I'm going to pin my, keep the spotlight here now. Um, but you could, you know, if I'm holding it like this, you don't really see those ends. Like I cut them short enough so they're not dangling down. Um, you know, I, you know, I, if it were, if it were one I was going to hang on the wall, I probably would tuck them because like I can still sort of see the little knots and stuff poking up. So, um, and I don't, I kind of like tucking in the ends. It's sort of, um, I don't know, makes me feel good to like get it nice and neat on the back if I can. So, um, but you wouldn't have to if you didn't want to. Um, it would still look really nice and be really sturdy. Um, but that's basically it as far as finishing. Um, and yeah, I've got 5% left on my computer battery. Um, so I've still got a little juice on this computer. Um, so what, what questions do you have about finishing? Anything that's coming up yet? And if you don't like the look of the dowel or a stick, you know, you don't have to put that there. You could always use like little pins or tacks or something to hang it up if, if you're gonna hang it up. Or, you know, you might not have intentions of hanging yours up. Maybe you wanna lay it on top of a, a dresser or a table, or it's gonna be like a little poster. So in that case, um, you know, you wouldn't need a dowel rod or anything like that. So, um, you know, part of it depends on what you wanna do with it and just aesthetically what you like. Um, so yeah, the dowel rod isn't any kind of requirement at all. So when you did your bottom, you to tuck in, if you wanted to tuck these in, you, you um, tuck them in the same way you did the other loose threads? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, I was making my phone co-host before I uh, my computer dies on me, but um, okay, so yeah, so um, yeah, so if I were gonna tuck in my ends, so yeah, just the same. I, 
thread through my needle and then you would just go up into the weaving. So up the first few rows and, and tuck in and tighten it and then go all the way down the line. Okay, thank you. And then yeah. you can tuck your knot in too, you said, right? Yeah, if you pull, yeah, you can't, yeah. If you pull tight enough, you can get it in. Um, and yeah, you just don't want to pull so tight that it sort of then like potentially disrupts the row you have, unless you right. like to look like that again. Like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't destabilize anything. It just depends aesthetically um, what you want there, but yeah. Okay, thanks. Maria, is anyone else running into questions? I was just gonna say, I found some cute little dowel rods at um, the dollar store. A oh. bunch of them for a dollar. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. So just some dollar store dowel rods, that'll get you there. Yeah. Perfect. Um, well, does anyone, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to end class early, but I do want to um, maybe switch my phone out to where my computer is. Is there anything else that anybody wants me to demonstrate? Um, finishing process or anything else that I can demonstrate? Okay, well then I'm gonna just shift around here for the last little bit of class. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn my computer off. I hope this doesn't shut Zoom off. I don't think it will, um, but if it does, we'll get back in just a second. <laughs> Okay, can you all hear me okay still? Okay, I just found my gallery view. So I didn't see any, if anyone was shaking their head or nodding their head, yes, I couldn't see it until now. So can you all hear me? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> great, great, great. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> well, I guess for the for the last little bit of class, um, I thought maybe it'd be fun if y'all wanted to um, just let's see we've got about fifteen minutes. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So um, if folks want, if if you want to maybe pop on and just for a minute, if you want to, um, we can spotlight you and 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 we if you want to show your weaving and just talk a little bit about anything you particularly like about it, or um, I like to sometimes think of like a rose and a thorn. So one thing that you really like, and then one thing that was, you know, maybe a thorn in your side or a little tricky or yeah, but if, if folks want to um, hop on and just chat for a minute, um, I'll invite y'all to do that. We'll have a little go around. Okay. Great, Melissa. Um, so you just want me to show it and then talk? Yeah, and I don't, on my phone, I don't have the capacity to spotlight people. So if you want to pin someone on your own, go for it. But yeah, let's see it, Melissa. So I got to talk a lot, but. This is a working way. And uh, I think I'm going to go on a walk tomorrow and get a stick. Because I like things clearly that aren't regular. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I had a blast with this. I um, I've only used like a full body loom before, so I've never done like a small one like this. Um, 
And so I've made a couple rugs out of like old sheets that we used and then also um, like ends of upholstery. I go, mm. I've got like a six foot rug upstairs that I made just out of upholstery ends from couch places. Um, but I've never done a small one and it's so fun because it doesn't take as long and it's not as hard. <laughs> And so everything about it was like way more relaxing. Um, and I also, it was also fun to use the different textures and different thicknesses. I've never done that before either with weaving. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really had a thorn. Um, I don't know. I, I just really liked it. And I think he did a great job teaching and made it super accessible but still like expansive enough for people who already have a little bit of working knowledge so thank you it was great I appreciate it well well thank you for sharing Melissa I appreciate it and I love how your weaving turned out it looks so much fun I just I wish it was in person I want to like touch everybody so <laughs> yeah very cool thank you all right if anyone else wants to share I'll share mine. I haven't finished. And um, I'm going to get a dowel from Fran. But this is mine. I just have to tuck these two in. So I did a different stitch. I just wrapped it around on top. I don't know if you can see it. Oh. Yeah, I just kind of did a different thing on top. But um, it was really fun. I'm, um, I'm not so daring. So this is pretty daring for me. Oh, I, mean, great. I like to do crafts and stuff, but I've always wanted to do this. So Fran, um, thank you, Fran, for encouraging me to sign up. My only thorn was my fault that when I cut the strings in the back, I just, I cut them. I didn't take my tape off first. So two of them were really short. So uh, I could barely tuck them in. Oh, but this was awesome. Yeah. Good. I feel like I could do this. I can be more daring and creative there you go perfect well thank you laura yeah it's it's, it's like it's so yeah. less a little daring with you know yeah. it was fun thank you very much thank you all right well if anyone else wants to share floor is open i'll go so, um, so I'm Fran. I know it shows my husband's name on here. Um, <laughs> what I'm excited about, well, okay. So I made two. So this, this one was, is my first one. And I put it, I was able during class to put it on this dowel and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna weave those ends in at the back. And I'm going to give this one as a gift actually. Um, and then my other one, I have to brag on my friend, Jen. I don't know if she's on tonight. Um, so, so Laura and Jen and Melissa, we all took sort of, these are all my friends. Um, <laughs> but look what Jen made us. She made us, she laser cut looms oh. for a, um, an acrylic loom. Wow. So, it's um so yeah so it's kind of hard to see but yeah here it is it's about the same as the is the cardboard loom that we got from class but she just cut this out with her laser cutter that's so awesome. uh, so that's how i was able to make two in all this time and i love this one too i know it, it's kind of bright in my house there you can kind of see the pinks and purples. I'm a purple girl. Um, yeah, so I just, I really loved it. I, I had taken um, a class. I'll show you the, the baby weaving that I made. It's on my wall. I had taken a class a few years ago at my yarn store and I made this little tiny one. That's awesome. Um, which I love, but class went so fast and it was one session I think it was one two hour session um and it was so fast and it was so long ago I I forgot how to do it mm -hmm. so having the three sessions I really loved learning each technique and then having a week to practice it so thank you I really appreciated yeah tonight. thank you
thanks for wrangling all your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Jan. Is there anything else that would like to share? Hi. Um, so this is actually, this is my partner's Jude. He's checking on our cats real quick. I, my, so my rose is that he did this really cool thing um, and that he is really enjoying it. And he's like now gotten a bunch of like looming and weaving stuff. And my thorn is that I found out we <laughs> use it for me. So I'm working on little paper flowers that I that I make. So we're doing crafting side by side, which is also a rose. So that's nice. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, this turned out great. That looks so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And he's working on a new one now. He like got a little a wooden loom. Oh. So. Very so I'm I'm happy for him <laughs> oh but you said it wasn't you <laughs> no I mean I don't mind working like minuscule I think I just have a harder time with like um abstraction mm. so like and then trying to figure out like what am I gonna make I I just have an issue like this is a the paper flowers are like a pretty clear definitive like end point you know when you're done so I feel that yeah. yeah I have different moods sometimes where yeah I need different things like sometimes more stuff is nice but then yeah other times it's like I just want to complete something and know that I've completed the thing as I was supposed to so um but that's great that y'all found something to do side by side so yeah awesome. well thank you for being here yeah thank you it's been a lot of fun good good I'm glad to hear that All right, well, we've still got a few more minutes if anyone else wants to hop on. Um, no pressure. You can always share in the chat too. There's some folks that have um, shared in the chat. All right, last call for anyone else that wants to share with the group. Okay, well, great. Oh, I have one, I have one more thing I wanted to show you guys. So there is a really great place in Lexington, especially um, if you need craft supplies at cheap price. It's a new place just opened in August. It's called Lexington Center for Creative reuse and they have all kinds of crafty supplies mm -hmm. um they have yarns laura and i were there on the weekend and they have like all kinds of textures of yarns and look what i got for 10 bucks there is it all is it all re like don't like reuse like secondhand craft supplies yeah so no so a lot of it is people that didn't want their craft supplies just donate Okay. Um, the the it's stuff like it's extra. All brand new. It's all brand new. So yeah, I found, it's extra. But they haven't used it. Uh, can you see this loom? It's a Melissa and Doug loom. Oh. And so a tabletop loom, like you can't even see the whole thing on screen. Yeah. Um, there's the top and the bottom. It's facing me, but it's like meant for kids. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me, like. This is cool. Here, what a score. 